there's enough uh, black voices of women in, in the Me Too movement right now? Are you seeing enough of them? Do I think that there's voices? Yes. Do I think that they're included in the conversation at the table? No. Okay. I'm just being honest with you. Right. In a lot of these um, uh, gatherings that we have in Hollywood, and I could name them, but I don't want to call them out because I don't want to look like I'm not in solidarity with women. I am. Everyone knows that, okay? You have to know that. But I go to these organizations, I go to these gatherings, and I'll see 3,000 women in that room, CEOs, producers, executives, Caucasian women, and I'll see five women of color, and it's by invite. Well, then. And we won't talk about gender inequality of pay, because a lot of the women who've stepped forward, and I stand in solidarity with them, okay? What they're getting paid, which is half of what a man is getting paid, well, we get probably a tenth of what a Caucasian woman gets. And I'm number one on the call sheet. And then I have to go in and I have to hustle for my worth. That's what I feel like I'm doing. When I demand what I feel, listen, I have a, more than a 30-year professional career. I, have, I had a friend who said, yeah, but Viola, your career is better than my career. I said, yeah, but you can't compare me to you. Because once again, I got the Oscar, I got the Emmy, I got the two Tonys, I've done Broadway, I've done off-Broadway, I've done TV, I've done film, I've done all of it. I have a career that's probably comparable to Meryl Streep, Julianne Moore, let's Sigourney Weaver, they all came out of Yale, they came out of Juilliard, they came out of NYU, they had the same path as me, and yet I am nowhere near them. Not as far as money, not as, as far as job opportunities, nowhere close to it. And yet, I have to constantly get on that phone, and I have fabulous agents, by the way. They, they are getting it. But I have to get on that phone, and people say, you're a black Meryl Streep. <laughs> you are, and we love you. We love you. There is no one like you. Okay, then if there's no one like me, you think I'm that, you pay me what I'm worth. Yeah. You give me what I'm worth. Yeah. And, not, and, and even in terms of roles, So I'm like, wherever Tom Hardy and Leo DiCaprio have gone, or Ryan Gosling, or Chris Pine, or Daniel Day-Lewis, the, the god of method, method yeah. I've never really fully gone there because of your great question. And I'm like, well, I don't want to be pulled mm. over for driving while method. Mm. Right. Not fully Steve, method. I get in uh, trouble for that. That's scarier. Right. So if I'm one-fourth's method, sometimes they're like, Amari. I'm like, guys, I'm here. I still go home to Jay and the kids. I'm not fully method. Mm. Yeah. Until you have that leverage to go fully method, right. which right. perhaps we're all searching for yeah. when we make more than five dollars and twenty-five cents a week. Right. <laughs> and then there's that. When Falcon Winter Soldier come out comes out, I'm the lead of the show. Right. You know, when No Pierce came out, you're the lead of the show. So we definitely have the power and the ability to, you know, ask those questions. Like it really bothered me. I've done seven Marvel movies now. Uh, I've every producer, every director, every stunt person, every costume designer, every PA, every single person has been white. Mm -hmm. We've had one black producer. His name was Nate Moore. He produced uh, 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 Black Panther. But then when you do Black Panther, you have a black director, black producer, you have a black designer you have a black stunt choreographer you have a black and i'm like that's more racist hmm. than anything else because if you only can hire the black people for the black movie are you saying they're not good enough when you have a mostly white cast right right you know so my big push with marvel with everybody is you know hire the best person for the job Well, it's not only about anybody's life, it's uh, in a way he personifies the uh, black American experience. He's somebody who, had he not faced the racial discrimination, he could have been a great athlete, a star. But because of that, he ended up a garbage collector. Mm. And perhaps this self-destructiveness, is it the, do you think, is it the, the was caused was it caused by 
racial discrimination? And is that the effect of racial discrimination on people? Here's the, here's the thing you got to remember when you talk about racial and you talk about discrimination. Maybe, what if he just wasn't good enough? See, it's so easy to just say, oh, it's because of this. It's because of racism. Oh, I didn't get the job because of that. Maybe you weren't good enough. Maybe, like his wife says, you were just too old. Why don't you, she says, why don't you just admit it? You were too old. He's the one that's hung up on, I would, you know. Hi, everyone. Welcome to About Actors. I created this channel where I give you candid interviews of actors from around the world. If you like this video, like and subscribe this channel to see more.